This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to use high dynamic range media in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to optimize Premiere preference settings for HDR. Before we get started, there's several preferences I want to talk about. Under File, Project Settings, General. This is after you've created the project. A couple things to pay attention to. You want to make sure that your GPU acceleration is set to metal. Apple has deprecated OpenCL. It continues to optimize metal. It'll provide you the fastest performance. Under Preferences, let's see, here we go. Under General, see this one. This is going to be off on your system. Enable Color Display Management. I'm in Premiere Pro Preferences, the General category. This should be on. It's going to require GPU acceleration, but it provides the most accurate colors. This is a new feature that showed up in the, the spring release of Premiere, and it's designed to solve questions where the color space of the video does not match the color space of the monitor, and it displays the colors much more accurately. This should be defaulting to on, but it's defaulting to off because it emulates the legacy behavior of Premiere. This is inside general. On playback, if you are using an external HDR monitor or are connecting one, you want to make sure that Enable Mercury Transmit is turned on. That's how you get video out of Premiere and into a monitor. You're also able to specify, as part of the setup for this, the bit depth of the monitor. And currently, although Mercury Transmit supports up to 12-bit depth, Adobe tells me you'll get more accurate color if you use 10-bit. Under Memory, you want to make sure that optimized rendering for memory is set to memory, not performance. You're going to get more accurate color, and when you shift into HDR, you're going to get all kinds of dialogues warning you that this needs to be set to memory. And then we'll click OK. Once we have the sequence created, let's go create a sequence. Let's take this red footage, and let's just create a new sequence. And we've now created a new sequence. Go up to Sequence Settings. Yes, you could create it using the standard new sequence, but I'm lazy. A couple things to point out. Under here, under Preview File Format, this defaults to an iframe only MPEG, which is perfectly OK, although I'm not overwhelmingly comfortable with it. What I will tend to do is I'll change this to QuickTime, and I will change this if I'm working with high dynamic range media or stuff that's going to go through a color grade. I'll have my, my preview files be ProRes 4x4. Why? It's 12-bit depth. It gives me the most accurate color, and it'll also save me time when I do exporting because I can use the preview files as part of my export. File sizes, though, are going to be really big and are going to take a fair amount of bandwidth. So it depends upon the size and frame rate of your master file in terms of how big the files are going to be. But if you want the most accurate previews, set it to QuickTime Apple ProRes 4x4. And we'll just do that here. The other thing that you want to do is you want to render for maximum bit depth. There's the warning that says optimize rendering for memory. Warned you that was coming, and it's going to come again when I turn this on. There it is. Click OK. Because we are not in an 8-bit video environment, we're in 10-bit or 12-bit or 14-bit, we want to make sure that we render to take advantage of all the bit depth in our video, and we want the maximum render quality. Will it slow things down? Yes. But you're also working with 4K images, which are not fast. So just some things to think about as you're doing your sequence settings. If, when you export, you don't work with the previews, you can make this whatever you want. But if you want to save time during export, setting this to 4x4 and turning these on will make a difference. When we import media, it flags clips based upon whether they're HDR based or not. And the way to see what those are is if we go to the metadata tab and in file we scroll down to where it says dynamic media. There we are, dynamic media. And notice here it says video color space. It's not flagging this as a Rec 2020 clip, even though it's a red file. So it should be. If I go to this Panasonic footage and scroll down, here's a Rec 2020 clip. Notice there the video color space is Rec 2020. It recognizes that as a 
an HDR clip. If I go to a Rec. 709 clip, it says, okay, it's a Rec. 709 clip. If Premiere does not recognize your imported clip as a Rec. 2020, or BT is just another standard, same concept, as a Rec. 2020 clip, your scopes are not going to be able to go and show HDR values. Like I said, HDR and Premiere is a work in progress. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at how to use high dynamic range media in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my website at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 274. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.